Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly break down how a makeshift Barcelona side defeated Inter Milan 2-1 to knock Antonio Conte's men out of the Champions League. But before we do that, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on our road to 2K subscribers. So when we look to the board and break down the game, what you do notice is that Barcelona are missing some notable names. Both sides playing in a 3-5-2 does mean that they will stifle each other out so it'll always be interesting to see how they would be able to create chances when we look at Inter they did try to press from the front and that did mean that Umtiti would be the spare man or Barcelona would have a spare center back because Lotaro and Lukaku can't press out three players with that being said Baragi and D'Ambrosio would be pressing high and closing down the wing backs and in midfield that battle was set in stone so what you end up seeing there is that Brozovic should be stepping to racket and out in the shuttling roles. It should be Alenia against Vecino and Borja Valero against Arturo Vidal. The great thing about Inter is that they didn't have a signed marker, so any one of those three players could shift across the pitch and close down markers. There were times where we did see Brozovic to the left and Valero a bit deeper, but besides that, that's how they kind of went about things. They wanted to press high from the front. They wanted to ensure that Barcelona couldn't play through their press and it'd be difficult for them to build out of the back and what was interesting was that once Inter Milan were notified that Borussia Dortmund went ahead we saw them go 4-3 men up front and what we ended up seeing there was that it was Vecino and Valerjo taking turns pressing Umtiti there was one example in particular where we did see Valerjo step to Umtiti we saw Brozovic shift out towards Rakitic and Skriniar step into the path of Vidal just to ensure that Barcelona couldn't build out of the back so that being said, we did, notif we did notice that that was the way Inter Milan wanted to go about things. And what was ironic was that Barcelona's best chances in that half and the manner in which they scored their opening goal did stem from the fact that they were able to bypass that press. When Inter weren't pressing high, they did drop off into that 5-3-2. And what was interesting about that was that Barcelona really struggled to create chances based off the fact that like Inter Milan, they lack creative players around the final third when Lionel Messi isn't involved. So what we often saw there was that Griezmann was dropping off into positions in between Berragi and Skriniar, and he was drifting into midfield to ensured that Barcelona retained possession and he was linking play. Carlos Perez was looking to make runs in between D'Ambrosio and Godin and looking to run in behind, but that was very far in between and Barcelona lacked the passing to get him into key areas when he did break free. So that was another issue that Barcelona had. In midfield, Rakitic was able to set the tempo of the game. At times, we did see Brozovic step to him. At other times, when Inter Milan dropped off into that 5-3-2, Taro and Lukaku were positioned beside him, but as the game wore on, we did see Rakitic eventually gain control. Vidal was looking to push forward into advanced positions to occupy the third center back, and that did see him involved in the opening goal, so that was key, but he rarely had an impact on the game besides that. And to that left-hand side, Alenia did a good job of shifting out into half spaces to receive the ball away from Vecino, and that was the big battle there because Vecino does like to push forward and get involved to be that third man runner but here he was focused on having to close down Alenia whenever he moved into that space. However, when you really look at it, Barcelona struggled to create chances from that avenue and they did look to create by bypassing Inter Milan's press. Whereas for Inter Milan, Barcelona don't press that high as we have been renowned to seeing them doing in recent years. And like Barcelona, they don't have those creative players in the final third and their midfield isn't renowned for playing defense splitting passes. So what Inter Milan did was they try to play balls over the top, try to get Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku to occupy Mark to combine with each other and that was a successful route for them towards goal so now we're going to look at some chances break down the goals and see why those two themes were so successful so when we start with Barcelona we see Titi breaking through Inter Milan's high press and as a spare man he's able to dribble forward in between the center forwards brush off Lotaro, and he slides the ball into Alenia shifting off Vecino in that right half space with Firpo pushing forward to peg back 
back D'Ambrosio. There is a gap between D'Ambrosio and Godin, and we end up seeing that pass from Alenia being played in between the right center back and the right wing back for Carlos Perez making that run in between De Vries and Godin. He receives the ball in left half space, and De Vries does a good job of tracking him, and what ends up happening there is that he fires a first-time effort on goal that Handanovic pushes away before it's cleared. But just like that, we see how they're able to bypass that press with the 3v2. We see the importance of Elenia shifting away from Vecino to get on that ball, and then Carlos Perez making the run in behind, which was rare, but it did happen, and it nearly led to a goal. When we look to Barcelona's opener, once again, it stems from the center backs bypassing Inter Milan's high press, which eventually leads to Barcelona playing a deep pass from midfield to bypass Inter Milan's back line. What we end up seeing there is Neto rolls the ball out into the path of Tadibo, and before Tadibo is pressed, he slides the ball out to Wage, who is close by Bragi. Wage plays the ball back into the path of Tadibo, and what he ends up doing is he ends up skipping past Lotaro, and when he skips past Lotaro, he ends up skipping in between Bragi and Brozovic, who was stepping to Rakitic. Once he skips by those two players, he ends up running at Skriniar, and he ends up playing the pass into the path of Griezmann, dropping off of De Vries, and then shifting towards his left-hand side to slide the ball out to Alenia. He slides that ball across Vecino into the path of Alenia, and Alenia does break into that towards that left channel, but then turns back and slides the ball to Griezmann ahead of Brozovic. What we end up seeing Griezmann do is he slides the ball out into a wider area for Firpo, who does push back Baragi. And when Firpo gets the ball, he ends up playing it back to Griezmann again in a deeper position. What we see here now is key because we end up having Carlos Perez make a run across Skriniar and De Vries in between them. And he makes that dart in between them. And we end up seeing Godin being occupied by Vidal pushing forward. Griezmann now is still ahead of Brozovic and Vicente and he fires a reverse pass in between the two Inter Milan midfielders into the path of Vidal ahead of Godin and the ball ends up ricocheting off Vidal into the path of his teammate in Carlos Perez getting ahead of De Vries and he ends up sliding his effort beyond Handanovic. Again, Starts with Tadibo taking out three Inter Milan players, Griezmann dropping off a bit deeper, and the run in behind of Carlos Perez that did make the difference. And with Vidal pushing forward, like we said he would do in an advanced position in midfield, operating more as a shuttler, this was the opportunity for Carlos Perez to make that darting run across the center backs to create that space for him. And that's how Barcelona were able to go ahead. So when we looked at how Inter were able to create chances, is Barcelona did impress them as high as Inter did. So what at Barcelona ended up doing was they ended up dropping off into the base shape of a 5-3-2 and Inter decided that they were either going to play through their strikers or they were able to play long over the top to try and get him behind the defense. That did see the wingbacks push forward and sometimes that did see some midfield battles going Inter Milan's way. When we look to the first example, we do have Perez stepping to Godin and what Godin's able to do that he plays the pass in between Alenia and Firpo for Lukaku dragging out Umtiti. What ends up happening there is that Lukaku flicks the ball into the path of Lotaro dropping off and dragging out Todibo, but Lotaro misses the ball, and what we end up seeing there is Valerjo making a run beyond Rakitic to get that pass. That is third man running, and he drives forward towards goal, and Wage does a good job of coming across to close him down, and that does see Valero play the ball across Longley with Lotaro making a run in between Tadibo and Longley for D'Ambrosio breaking free in right half space, but he fires his shot wider than that. But just like that, you see the third man running, you see the two strikers occupying center backs and pulling them out of position, and that's how Inter Milan wanted to create their chances. When we look to the next example, it's Barcelona playing out of the back that does lead to their downfall. It's Longley pushing forward and sliding the ball out to Alenia, and Vecino does step towards him. 
So we do have Alenia playing the ball back to Longley, who is eventually closed by Lukaku. And Longley does well to get beyond Lukaku, but he plays the pass into Rakitic. But Rakitic ends up being closed by Lotaro Martinez. And when he's closed by Lotaro, Rakitic plays the ball back to Alenia, swarmed by Brozovic and Vecino. And when he plays the ball back into the path of Rakitic, it hits off Rakitic and falls into the path of Vecino, who breaks on a 3v2 against the Barcelona backline. And with Lotaro breaking across Todibo, we end up seeing the pass played across Umtiti into the path of Lukaku. Lukaku breaks into right half space beyond Longley and he cuts across the sliding marker in Umtiti but Longley did well to recover Umtiti's position and that saw him block Lukaku's shot but again it stems through some midfield pressing as Inter dropped off and frankly on another break Lukaku should be scoring that chance. Shortly after that we see more direct play from Inter Milan through the strikers but also getting the wing backs forward on the break. What we end up seeing here is that Handanovic slides the ball out to Godin and he is pressed by Perez and with D'Ambrosio pushing Firpo high up the pitch what we see is Vecino dropping off in a pocket of space to receive the ball. Oddly enough you'd expect Alenia to step but this time we see Longley steps to press Vecino. Vecino squares the ball back to DeVries who is closed by Vidal and Perez. What we end up seeing here now is that DeVries clips a long ball into the right channel over MTD and Firpo for the run of Lotaro Martinez. So what we end up seeing there is that when MTD covering space he should be winning that ball but he ends up being brushed off the strength of Lotaro who breaks down that right channel with Firpo looking to close him down. And we see Lotaro pull the ball back to Lukaku ahead of Wagi and ahead of Todibo. Now with Lukaku ahead of those two defenders, it allows space for Baragi to push forward and Lukaku slides the ball into the path of Baragi, but he fires a shot on goal that Neto does push away. But just like that, you see Inter Milan's approach, pushing the wing backs high, having the midfielders drag out Barcelona's midfielders out of position and getting their center forwards to occupy the Barcelona center backs and use their power and strength to get the advantage. When we look to the final example, of that first half one of them does see DeVries step forward towards half ahead of Perez and Griezmann and clip a long ball into the path of Lotaro running in between Todibo and Waggy, where he's able to bring it down on his first touch and fire a shot on goal that frankly he should have scored but we did see Neto push it away and when we look to Inter's equalizer once again it highlights all the main factors that Inter were trying to exploit against this Barcelona back line it does see Godin get the ball in a wider position and it pulls out Perez but Godin plays the ball around Perez into the path of Brozovic and before Rakitic can step he slides it out to D'Ambrosio and D'Ambrosio instantly clips a long ball over the top for Lotaro making a run across to Debo and Umtiti. Lotaro does well to hold up the ball and when he backs off into Todibo what ends up happening there is that Umtiti and we do see Waggy make the move in towards Lotaro. But in that play alone, we had Lukaku dropping off to pull out Longley. And as Lotaro was holding up the ball, Lukaku did make a run towards goal. And before the Barcelona backline could dispossess Lotaro, who had the ball poked in the path of Lukaku, who fired a low shot off Umtiti to level the game. But when you break down that first half as a whole, it was two sides playing identical systems and lacking creative players in the final three third so you always questioned how they'd create chances. Barcelona created their best chances when they bypassed Inter's high press and Inter Milan took a different approach playing through their strikers getting their wing backs involved and frankly just simply looking to go long because they lacked the creative personnel not only in midfield but also in those advanced areas. So when we look to the second half not much really changed in terms of the pattern. We did see more of Lotaro doing a good job backing into the center back specifically to Debo to win individual challenges and to set Inter Milan forward and we did see Inter Milan dropping off more deeper into their 5-3-2 and we didn't see much pressure on Rakitic, Alenia or Vidal which allowed Barcelona more time on the ball, more chances to dominate possession but frankly they created the chances in the same manner that Inter Milan did in the first half. When we look to Barcelona's first chance once again it stems from the high press. 
press. And we see Rakitic receive the ball from deep from a poor Lukaku cross. That does see Brozovic step to Rakitic, but Rakitic bypasses him to find Vidal. But Vidal is closed by Borja Valero. And when Valero steps, Vidal squares the ball into the path of Alenia, who does attract Godin into the Barcelona half. What Alenia does well is he skips past Godin and across Borja Valero to play the ball into Perez who drops off Skriniar. Now we see Perez skip past Skriniar, skip past Valero and he slides the ball across D'Ambrosio and across De Vrij into the path of Griezmann in lap half space and Griezmann forces a save out of Handanovic. Shortly after that we have a rare occasion where Inter are able to build out of the back and it's Handanovic rolling the ball out to Borja Valero dropping deep and no one presses him until he gets towards the halfway line and that's where we see Alenia step towards him and what we end up seeing there is that D'Ambrosio pushes high to occupy Longley and we have Lotaro dropping off deeper to pull out Mtidi. Valero plays a long ball over the top into the path of Lukaku running across to Debo where he's able to hold him off and out muscle him out of the way but in a 1v1 situation with Neto, Lukaku fires a powerful effort off the keeper and wastes a golden opportunity. Besides that, we had another midfield scramble that saw Lotaro playing Lukaku, who ran off Longley, but he rounded Neto and couldn't fire his effort on goal. We did see Valverde make changes, bringing on Suarez and bringing on De Jong. Suarez struggled throughout that game, and he was closed down by Godin at every opportunity. And when we look to De Jong, he continued to control the game in the manner that Rakitic was, although he did offer a bit more of attacking verve going forward. There was one play in particular where he was closed down by Brozovic and slid the ball out to Longley, closed by Vecino, and Longley slid the ball out to Firpo ahead of D'Ambrosio. We ended up seeing De Jong run off Brozovic to receive a square pass from Firpo, and when he received the ball, he was closed by Godin, and he skipped by Godin, played the ball across Valero into the path of Suarez, who couldn't control it, and Vidal got onto it, but side-footed his effort inches wider than net. Inter did make changes as well, replacing both of their wingbacks with Politano and Lazaro, but they never really impacted the game. But besides that, we did see Alenia play a ball across Lotaro into the path of De Jong, but we had Brozovic step into that. And when Brozovic intercepts that pass, he plays it into the path of Lukaku, dropping in to drag out Umtiti. Lukaku does a good job, and he tries to get the ball played into Lotaro who runs off Alenia in between Umtiti and Tadibo, but Longley does well to get across. But what ends up happening there is Lotaro does well to brush him off, hold off the ball, and flick it over him to run towards Tadibo and Umtiti, but he bends his effort wider than that. So we see different phases of that first half where we have Inter playing long, we see Barcelona playing through Inter's press, and we see some individual brilliance from Lotaro. Then we had more changes. Esposito replaced Valero and we saw Inter move to more of a 3-4-3 as they had to win the game and Barcelona brought on Ansu Fati for Perez and within minutes Ansu Fati was able to win the game with the moment of individual brilliance. We see Tadibo pressed by Esposito and he slides the ball to Waggy ahead of Brozovic and Lazaro and what Waggy ends up doing is he slides the ball to Vidal and Vidal fizzed across Ficino into the path of Fati, dropping off a of Politano. Now we have Fati ahead of Politano, and they go 1v1, and Fati skips across him and splits Brozovic and Vicino to find Suarez ahead of De Vrij. and Suarez plays the wall pass back into Fati from an awkward angle, and with Skriniar stepping ahead, Fati instantly fires a low shot beyond Handanovic off the post and in. But when you break down the game as a whole, I guess you can give up Verde credit based off the fact that the substitutes did combine for the winner. However, it was a very simple game to break down. Barcelona, without some key players, shifted into an identical system that Inter Milan played, and they struggled to create chances despite controlling the game and only created those chances when they were able to bypass Inter's high press. Inter, on the other hand, went long, played through Lukaku and Lautaro Martinez, created chances, had two goals disallowed, and frankly, on another day, they possibly would have won the game. But let me know what you guys think. Barcelona rested some players, but under Valverde, do you you think they can win the Champions League and what about Inter? Just not good enough here but do you think Conte can have them bounce back to win Serie A? 
meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget if you like this video, give it a thumbs up on our road to 2K subscribers. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.